I should also mention that I've been doing radio for over 15 years, morning radio. And I don't know if some of you might know me from the mix. Anybody remember me when I was on the mix with Humble Howard? Nobody. Excellent. Thanks for the support, folks. <laughs> That's great. Well, if you like me this morning, my name's Judy Croon. If you don't, my name's Sandy Ronaldo. So, so life is 10% what happens to you, but 90% how we react to what happens to us. And a lot of times that reaction involves dealing with difficult personalities. I've been doing stand-up comedy for over 15 years. I've played the best of gigs. I've played Los Angeles. I've played New York, Chicago, just for Laughs Festival in Montreal. But I've also played the worst of gigs, and it's actually the worst gigs that I learned the most. I learned what triggers difficult personalities aside from alcohol, and I learned what diffuses those difficult personalities or those hecklers. I learned what diffuses them very quickly. So the general heckler management tips in dealing with office hecklers or difficult personalities, maintaining your control, maintaining your poise, maintaining your rhythm. The whole time we're talking about just maintaining your professionalism. Maintaining your control. If I'm in a comedy club and somebody's sort of beaking off to the right of the stage, I tend to initially ignore it only because if I go into attack mode, then I turn the rest of my office, my audience, against me. When I need them 12 seconds later to laugh, they're going to think that I can't take a joke. How ironic. I'm a comic standing on stage. So I tend to ignore it. And the same thing. You give somebody the benefit of the doubt at the office, you let it go. However, if the heckling continues, take it off! <laughs> then I have to acknowledge it or I look like my ears are painted on, right? I want to look at the schoolyard bully for two seconds because there's a couple of things here going on. If you don't stand up to school bullies and deal with school bullies, they become office bullies. And there's also something that they do in schools that I think we could implement in the office. How many of you have kids? Our grandkids, all right. Uh, how many people were kids? Let's try that first of all. <laughs> okay, we've got something in common. A lot of times, office bullies and school bullies, they're being bullied by somebody else. So the idea, the game is to get the target on somebody else's back as quickly as possible. And you can't shake that off, which is why you have to stand up to a bully. Now, in the United States, four kids killed themselves last year because they were literally bullied to death. One girl made a video. She put it on YouTube. She emailed it to 100 friends and it was 10 ways to kill Debbie on YouTube. And the schools hid behind the fact, they said, guess what, the internet isn't school property. So I was shocked by that. I said to my teacher, my sister, who's a teacher with the Durham School Board, I said, is that possible? And she said, and this is why I love Canada, she said, absolutely not. Just the fact that those kids all go to the same school, they don't even have to open their emails. They can all automatically be suspended. Now, you don't want it to get to that point, so what do we do in Canada? We do something called, and it's based on an Aboriginal tradition. Like I said, I think this would be phenomenal in the offices. They do something that's called a reconciliation meeting. The money. So they How many people have ever been in a job that they absolutely hated, but they stayed there because they were getting a paycheck? Right? How many people are still in those jobs? <laughs> right? Right, but at least it buys you some time. So think about the money. First, when I started doing stand-up comedy out west, I was doing this hell gig north of Edmonton. I had to open for male exotic dancers. All right, you know the kind of club I'm talking about. It was an all-female audience. The last thing they wanted to see was another female standing on stage telling jokes for half an hour. But the management was really smart. They paid me my money before I hit the stage. So when I hit the stage, first two minutes in, I hear, boo, bring on the male exotic dancers, boo. But I just kept thinking about the money burning a hole in my pocket. So 25 minutes into the act, as if it couldn't get any worse, all of a sudden, there's an exotic dancer in the back of the room. He has a chimpanzee. The chimp snaps off its leash, starts running towards the stage, grabs my leg. I let out a blood-curdling scream <laughs> to the biggest laugh of the evening. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. <laughs> I thought about the money and that's what got me through it. Worst case scenario, maintain your sense of humor. Oh, I kept laughing when I was up there, but I thought about the money.